Hey guys, so if you missed class today, February 11th, a um, couple of reminders. Um, reminder one, um, next week, next Friday to 18 is your next set of deadlines. So that'll be section two, thesis development here. Um, these three things will be due on Friday with your text submission. And then the following Monday, just like last time, your checkpoints with your dossier sheets will be due and your reflection will be due. So make sure that you're working on those this week. Um, and I'm working on getting back to you feedback from last time so you can start incorporating that as well um, for this next submission. Um, okay, so a lot of you asked me about in the survey this week about creating an uh, exploded axonometric view in Revit. So, um, the easiest way I can show you how to do that, we're going to repeat what we did in class today. So I think a lot of you forget um, that you have your little selection box tool, and that is going to be key for this exercise. Um, so we're going to do a little refresher on that. So um, I've got this project um, just as an example. So I'm on my floor plan. Um, you can be on any view um, to use your selection box. Typically you would be going from a plane or an elevation or something um, to your selection box. So, um, you know, the selection box is mostly useful um, in the case that you're trying to look at something that's like on the interior. Like if I have this big building and I'm just trying to look at like a small portion of the interior, it's really hard to see if I'm in this 3D view, right? Like if I'm in this view where I can see the entire building, it's really hard for me to work on casework that's down in here in the middle of the building without just like hiding a bunch of stuff, which is annoying and takes up too much time. So the smart way to do that is to select what you wanna look at. You can kind of select arbitrarily. Like I just wanna look at this casework. I mean, it doesn't really matter how far I select. I just wanna select generally this group. And then you click the selection box here, which is, um, the little blue, I guess, like blue sphere in a little box that lives in your um, ribbon. So after I've selected what I want to see in 3D, I click selection box. And you got to zoom in. And it's going to show me just the stuff I selected in 3D so that I don't have to like hide all that other stuff to be able to see it. And it makes it a lot easier to be able to work when you're trying to align things or you're just trying to see what things look like. Um, It'll make your life a lot easier. So we have to use this tool to make our axonometric view. So now we're gonna make the axonometric view. So um, this building is just one, one story, um, but we're gonna pretend that it's more than one. Um, so we're gonna start with making our level one for the exploded axon. You know, you would have them stacked up. So I'm gonna grab my entire floor plan level one and then I'm going to come up here and click my selection box again so now I can see the whole level one in 3d right this little orange box this dash box this is my selection box when I select it with my mouse, when I click on it, these little blue arrows appear, and that lets me stretch my selection box as much as I want to. And it like kind of cuts, like it crops to show me, you know, specific area, or you can put it back and show more. Um, so we want to see this entire level of our building, right, for the axon. So I've got it here. You can um, use your little box here, your cube, your navigation cube um, to position your building. So make sure that you choose whichever you know, corner it is of your building that you wanna see in your axon. You know, maybe this makes the most sense for my building. So I'm gonna click this corner of the navigation cube. So you know, if I had the building like this, if I click this corner, it's gonna automatically go to that position. And you wanna make sure that you're doing it this way instead of positioning just with your mouse so that every level is aligned exactly to the same view. Okay, so now we're ready to save level one. So to do that, 
right now I'm just in my 3D view, but I have to duplicate it, duplicate it and give it a new name so that I don't override it when I'm doing level two. Um, so we're gonna do that just like we did our floor plans last semester. So I'm gonna right click the view that I'm in right now. I'm gonna right click duplicate view with detailing. So now here it is, copy one. I'm gonna rename it and you can call this, you know, axon level one or whatever it is you wanna name it. Okay, so now I have that view and that one's saved. And then this is the one that our scope box is living in where we're changing things, our just regular 3D view. So now I only have a one story building, right? But if you had two stories or three stories or four stories, you would pull up on your selection box so that you show what's up here on level two. And then you would pull up the bottom and see you can like align with your levels over here. You'll pull up the bottom so that you cut off level one. And then we would only see level two here. And then we're gonna position it back to the same spot on the cube so that everything is exactly the same angle. And then we're just gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna right click on my view over here in the browser. I'm gonna duplicate with detailing. I'm gonna right click again and rename. We're gonna call this, whatever you wanna call it, axon level two. And you'll repeat this process for every level that you have. And those views are living here under 3D views in your browser. And so you have the ones from class here. And then these are the ones we just created. Now to assemble, we're gonna make a new sheet. So you go to view, sheet, and you'll pick your title block, don't worry about that. And then you drag your 3D views onto the sheet just like we do any other view. So I'm gonna drag axon level one here. And then I'm gonna drag axon level two. And then I'm gonna turn off, like I don't wanna see these titles, right? Like I don't want that in the way in the middle of my graphic. So I'm gonna select my view. I'm gonna say no title. So that took the titles away. So now I have these levels, right? Really have that amount of order, this one goes on top. Um, now you need the lines to connect them. So I'm gonna use a detail line. You can either type DL on your keyboard for detail line or draw line, or um, you can come up here to annotate and select detail line pick the line type that works for your graphic style. Um, I'm gonna use this dash line. And then you wanna connect points that you know are in the same position between all the levels on your floor plans. Those kind of points would be um, stairs because obviously stairs are in the same location on every floor, elevator shafts. Um, if you had you know, a facade on your building that doesn't change, that doesn't you know, cut in or out like this building you can connect those. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna draw a line here. And then I'm going to align my view. So see, I'm not in my view. I'm on the sheet right now. I'm not activated in the view. I'm gonna move the entire view to align this corner of my building with this line best I can. I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to nudge it over. And then I'm gonna do the same with this one. I'm gonna move this view until I get that corner aligned with my dashed line. Okay. So see now I have a line that's going through all my levels. And you would repeat that process, you know, for the different elements that you want to connect to show how your levels connect. Um, and then furthermore, if you want to hide different bits of um, information in your views, you can do that. So like if I don't wanna see these orange boxes, these are my selection box that we used to drag around the levels, but I don't wanna see that in my axon. So I'm gonna select it and on my keyboard, I'm gonna type EH, which is for element hide. So that just hid that scope box. 
um, you all were asking about how to unhide. So if I want to show something again that I've already hidden, you type RH on your keyboard, which stands for reveal hidden. And then it takes me to like this funny view with the magenta box. Um, anything that's pink is currently hidden. Anything that's like this half tone gray color means that that's not currently hidden. If I want to unhide something pink that's hidden, I select it. And then you come up here to the um, ribbon and you'll click unhide element. And now it's gray because that means I've unhidden it. And then to get back to the normal view, like I don't want to be in this reveal hidden elements pink mode anymore. You come up here and click toggle reveal hidden elements mode. And then see now it's unhidden again. So I'm going to hide that. And then there's a few other ways you can hide things. Um, you could hide by work sets. You could turn your work sets on and off if you've been um, faithfully putting things on there. So I'll give you a fresher on that. If you wanted to turn those on and off, you hit VV on your keyboard. Um, that goes to your visibility graphics page, little box. Come over here to work sets tab, and then you could turn things off here. So if I wanted to turn off, um, like I've got all those trees and stuff, um, showing on my lower one, you could say hide. That shouldn't change anything on this top view, but like here, if I come into this view and I um, turn off site, it's gonna hide all that stuff out here, all the grass and stuff. These look like, let's see, those are on the Inkscape work set. So I could come back here again. I just hit VV on my keyboard. And I could hide this level too. I'm sorry, this work set. So those go away. You can hide things via work sets. Um, you can hide things individually by clicking and typing EH. Or you can hide things by category. So if I wanted to hide all of my ceilings in this view, um, right now I think I've got the roof selected. Um, I'm going to hide the roof. If I wanted to hide all these ceilings and I didn't want to like click every single one of them to hide them, I could select one. And then I could right click and say hide and view by category. And then that hides everything that's of the same category. So it just hit all of my ceilings at once. Um, and then if you wanted to unhide those again, you would just type RH reveal hidden. And then you would select unhide. Oh, that's my roof. So I'm going to unhide the roof. And then, um, sorry, can't see through the roof. I'm going to set it to wireframe so I can see these pink hidden ceilings. You would right click and say unhide and view by category, or you can do it up here in the ribbon. And it will unhide them all at once too, just like we hid them all at once. Um, lastly, you could also do it by filter. Um, if I wanted to, let's see. If I wanted to hide, just for the sake of this example, if I wanted to hide all the ceilings again, or I wanted to hide all the walls, you could also go to your visibility graphics panel again, but this time in the model categories tab, it's the first tab it opens up to, you can unclick things that you don't want to see in this view. So if I unclick ceilings here, all my ceilings will again hide in this view. And then same thing to turn them back on, you go back to VB, back to your visibility graphics box, you would check ceilings to show them and they'll come back. Um, for your axons, if you do have any of this other like extraneous little notes and stuff, I would hide any of that because you don't want to see that in your axon. You just want this to be a nice graphic representation. So like you can hide this kind of stuff. You can hide your levels. Um, if you have anything floating, you might want to hide that. Um, Depends on the graphic style that you're looking for. Um, oh, one other thing. We also talked about this in class. You can come down here to your visual styles box. That's the little box where you select if you want it to be wireframe or, you know, hidden line that just makes it gray, or if you wanted it to look rendered. Um, come up to this little top option that says graphic display options. And I like to turn on smooth lines with anti-aliasing for my 3D views. It just kind of makes them look a little smoother, a little nicer, like that's nicer for printing, especially when you have things on boards. Um, 
You can also play with like sketchy lines. We talked about this last semester, kind of gives it more of like a process feel. Um, let's turn this up so we can see. It just gives it like a sketchy look. Um, and then you could also, um, you know, you can play with shadows, you can play with any of this stuff, but you could turn up transparency um, if you wanted to be able to like see through walls um, so that you can see what's behind them in your axon. You can do that by different objects. You can turn on um, just the transparency for like the walls that are particularly in the way that you can't see behind. Um, just play with it. And then of course, after you do all this, you'll export your sheet as a PDF and it'll keep everything nice and to the same scale um, as long as you follow the printing instructions from last semester. And then um, you could take this into either Photoshop or Illustrator and do some um, post-processing if you wanted to. You could add background, um, you know, you could add sky, you could change colors, um, anything you want to do. So. Um, let me know if you have any questions about this. I'm happy to explain further if there's something you didn't quite catch um, or that you don't think I'm doing a good job of explaining in the video. Um, don't forget to refer to the dossier overview for section two. Um, I'll open that back up if I have it. Don't forget to refer to section two, thesis development. All this needs to go into your second section of your dossier. So make sure you're responding to all of these things. Um, and then also I need to send out an announcement about this, but if you um, didn't see my previous announcement, I think two weeks ago, make sure that you are meeting with Zara um, at least once per section. Um, I'm going to have her check in with me to let me know who's gone this year. So starting with this section, section two, that's due in a week. Um, sometime next week, if you haven't yet already, make sure that you go and talk to her if you have any questions about your dossier. Um, even if you don't have any questions, just let her give you feedback. It's always good to have another pair of eyes on your work, um, even other than yours and mine or your classmates. Um, she's an excellent resource for you all, and she's available in the grad studio Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, from 10 to two o'clock. Um, you can just drop in there. It would be great to do it before studio or before design communications while you're already here in the building. Just go stop in there and see her at 12.30, 12.45. Um, if you can't see her in person on Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 to two, um, she is available also via Zoom those days and hours, but um, you will need to set that up beforehand with her instead of just um, dropping in, of course. So she knows to get on Zoom. Um, I did send out an announcement about that a few weeks ago, but make sure if you haven't done that yet that um, just kill two birds with one stone. While you're there to talk to her about studio, just go ahead and talk to her about your dossier as well. Um, if you all have any questions, let me know. I'm always available. Send me a um, Canvas message or you can email me. I'll probably respond faster to um, Canvas just because I get the notification on my phone so I see it sooner. Um, but either way, I'll respond. So let me know if you have questions. Thank you guys.